What are you doing here? Wait, this thing's on? Well, 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 it took me long enough, but here I am starting another video. I guess you wonder how I've been. Welcome back. If you've watched me before, welcome. If this is your first time watching the channel, I'm Liam Hammer. This is Hammer Sports. I want to talk a little bit about the Broncos and their win over the Jets 10-9, which was a slog fest. And you've heard it a million times from basically everyone talking about this game. This game was ugly. This game was wet. This game was miserable. This game was cold. So I don't really want to talk about that. I want to talk about some of the parts of this team and this offense, especially that we haven't talked about because we've been given Vance Joseph his flowers and he has been incredible. And this defense been incredible, but the offense, ah, I'm going to kill myself. Wow. I'm going to kill myself and it's your fault. That's no reaction. Nah, nah, don't want it. If you've wondered where I've been for the last, I don't know, like year, uh, I've been posting stuff on Twitter. Weird. X. I guess it's X. I don't know. No one ever calls it X. It's Twitter. It should have been always been Twitter. But I've been posting over there stats, analytics, things that I find interesting about the game, mostly the Broncos. Um, and so go give me a follow. It's Hammer Sports YT uh, on Twitter slash X, whatever you want to call it. And I've been doing a lot of work with uh, the Let's Talk Broncos podcast. So go give them a follow on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, wherever. Some great shows, some great vlogs from Mario Vitanzi that I've been editing. Go over there, enjoy it. I'm loving it. But I do want to bring some content back to this channel. Uh, and so that brings me to today's video. I want to talk about a couple stats, a couple deep dive informations that I found really interesting. Off the top, let's talk about the obvious elephant in the room, Bo Nix. Was not good, at least statistically. Uh, 12 of 25, 60 yards, 2.4 average. Excuse me, I have to go and vomit. But he had a touchdown and no sacks. Sean Payton made it clear that he views sacks as a quarterback stat more than an offensive line stat. Last year, Russell Wilson, oh my God. There's compilations everywhere of just play after play that he created the sacks. He created the pressure. He took a perfectly fine offensive line job and turned it into a monstrosity. In fact, so last season, Russell Wilson was sacked on 20% of his pressures. That's, that's not great in case you didn't know. So far this season, Bo Nix has been sacked on 8% of his pressures. Yes, it's been up and down season. Yes, he threw four picks the first two games. It took him four games to throw a touchdown. He threw only 60 yards against the Jets. But there's still stuff to like about Bo Nix's game. This is one of them. His ability to mitigate the effect of pressure is something we have been begging, begging, literally begging for, for a long time. I'm obviously picking on Russell Wilson and what he did here as a Bronco, but that was a great example of what not to do in the pocket. There's obviously stuff for him to work on. He's throwing for 60 yards in a game, I don't care if it is hailing, um, that's not good enough. You cannot throw 60 yards in a game and expect to win. But one thing that I really have appreciated about Bo Nix, and this is why, my message to you as a Bronco fan, why you should hold off on jumping the ship. Every point of this season he has taken steps forward. First half of the Seattle game, awful. Second half, he took steps forward. Pittsburgh game, first half, awful. Second half, he improved. Buccaneer game, fantastic. Oh my God, he's the hero. Everything comes crashing down with the Jets, but he still improved. The second half had him throwing arguably his best throw of the day, which was a throw that he threw to Cortland Sutton in coverage. Uh, nice, it was like a 30 yard throw and he showed good command. That was something he struggled with, was showing command of the football, kept slipping out of his hand. He saw every throw he threw it and then he looked down at his hand like, ah, you betrayed me. It's not gonna be a linear road. It's not gonna be Jaden Daniels who just looks great out of the box. But just because there's been up and down doesn't mean we have to jump ship. That dovetails perfectly into the next thing I wanted to bring up, which is this receiving core. Uh, the receiving core, let's let him down a lot this season. There's a ripple effect of bad plays. 
you throw a four yard completion on second and 10, you have a third and six. The play calls for a third and six or a third and five are different than what you can call in a third and 10 or a third and 12. And so you put more pressure on your quarterback. And this isn't all on the receivers. It's a it's a two-way street. The quarterback has to do something. The receiver has to do something. And early in the season, a lot of concern was made out of the receiver's separation. And it was really concerning. And it's still something that is not this team's strength. I was at the forefront. I posted some graphics about how their separation was just abysmal, especially Cortland Sutton in the first couple games. Awful separation. It's come back more to median. They're still bottom 10, I believe. I think the 23rd in the league in average separation. That's also including running back separation, tight end separation, uh, screen separation, stuff like that. So the numbers can get a little skewed. You look at their separation now, and, and it's not great. Um, you know, a guy like Devon Vele, who hasn't played since week one, he's still at 4.4 yards. But the guys who've played, Marvin Mims, three and a half, uh, Lil Jordan Humphrey, three. Those are the only two receivers over three yards of separation. It's not great. Cortland Sutton, 2.6. Josh Reynolds, 2.4. Torrey Franklin, 2.4. It's not great. Don't try nothing fancy. Your situation is putting out a hatred. Damn. We're in a tight spot. And we seem to be waiting for someone in this receiving room to take a step. It feels like Sean Payton is waiting. He's begging these guys, hey, show me something. Show me something. And, and we haven't seen it. Patrick Chiodi on Twitter, go make sure you give him a follow. But he's brought up some incredible points about this receiving core. Some clips where you just see the lack of effort. And it slows down the timing of the play. You look at what their yards after catches. This is not a yak full receiving core. You know, Cortland Sutton, that's never what you've expected him to be. Josh Reynolds, that's not what you expect him to be. You bring in guys like Marvin Mims for that. You bring in guys like Troy Frick for that. And these guys haven't been what we wanted them to be. And it feels like we're in this section where Sean Payton is sitting here just waiting for someone to show up. The problem me to put out this chart on Twitter a couple days ago is Broncos receiver routes run percentage. So this is looking at basically the total amount of dropbacks that the team has had, the absolute maximum routes that could be run by a player. What percentage of those are these guys running week to week? And you see in week one, Vailey's running is the three. <laughs> He's running as the third guy, and he did good as that, and he's been injured since. You look at that, Franklin was not active week one. The guy that I want to look at, though, there's two guys who really pop off this chart for me. It's um, the blue line, uh, the light blue line of Josh Reynolds and the dark blue line of Marvin Mims. These are two dudes who are concerning. They're, they're, I'm getting, I'm worried. This was supposed to be Marvin Mims' breakout year. This is supposed to be where he takes a step forward and he gives the offense that burst, that explosion down the field that we so desperately need. It hasn't been. You look at that, he's, uh, you know, week one ran as the as the fifth receiver. Week two ran as the fifth receiver. Week three ran tied for the fourth. And then week five, four plummets all the way back down. He has not been used. He ran one route in week four. One route. Now, your original thought might be, well, the Broncos just aren't throwing it as deep because the weather. And that's fair. But they still did throw the ball deep. They threw it to Trey Franklin. They threw it to Cortland Sutton. And they missed on a few other deep shots. But it wasn't to Mims. And this is something that is worries me. This is a guy whose stock is quickly plummeting. I mean, all of a sudden, we go from him being, yeah, he's going to be the guy who's going to burst this season to now, I don't know if he's going to be active next week. The team obviously values him as a special teams player. Why do I say that? Well, because despite not being part of the game plan in week four, ah, like at all, he was still active over Devon Vele, who did really, really good week one as a rookie. So it makes you wonder where they see his role in this offense. Because someone's going to have to come out of this lineup for Vele to get back in. This is a guy I really want to see play more snaps as Vele. But those snaps have to come from somewhere. Does it come from Mims? Well, they seem to like him as a special teamer. And you look at Jordan Humphrey, little Jordan Humphrey. He's also, he's kind of taking that job as the number two. And that brings me to the other blue line, Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds has been a solid receiver for the team. Uh, he's not flashy. He's not really special. Uh, I mean, that is a dig. He just isn't. Uh, he's uh, just a solid receiver. But 
we've noticed his production tanking. If you look at the chart, it's going down the wrong direction. Now, what's interesting about Reynolds is he, I think, is stuck in a situation where the market has been flooded by players of his archetype on this team. You think of Cortland Sutton, Lil Jordan Humphrey, Devon Bailey. None of those guys are great separators. They're good possession receivers. They're all in the similar mold to what Reynolds is doing. And Reynolds hasn't, ex- hasn't separated himself from the pack. If anything, he hasn't done anything to really make you want to keep him in the, in the lineup over Vele. I wonder if Vele is going to be taking snaps from Reynolds is the guy I wonder. Because obviously this team isn't going to be benching Cortland Sutton. Lil Jordan Humphrey is getting more route share than Reynolds right now. And I don't know if they want to get rid of Franklin because he has that dynamic element. They keep using him more and more. So do they want to get rid of him? It's going to be interesting to see how this receiver room plays out. And someone's going to have to take a step forward because right now Bo Nix does not have help. No one is stepping up saying, Bo, I'm your man. You can count on me. But that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you want to see me make video-wise because I'm still finding my voice here on YouTube. I don't quite know what shoe I want to sit into. So let me know. Tell me. What do you want to see stat-wise, history-wise, Broncos-wise? Let me know. And like this video if you liked it. helps me know that this is something you liked. And if you didn't like it, well then, (laughs) I'm really impressed that you're here for this message because I, I would have left a long time ago. So power to you.